Hi everybody. This is Gloria John Wynne Malknadu. I have uh, written a book called Ideal or True uh, Ideal Love. And I am dedicating the book to my loved ones, those with us in the physical world as well as those in the spiritual world. And before I begin, I would like to for everyone to know that my idea of what true love might be is not what everyone's idea will be or what they might have in their mind. This is just my perception and my perspective. In this world, when one is born, they know they are loved either by a parent, two parents, grandparents, or any other guardianship that God deems is the rightful person or the legal court team is the rightful person uh, to look after such said person. They are all sorts of there are all sorts of love in the world. There's agape love, there's parental love, there is friendship love, and there's true ideal love. Some people have been blessed with having experienced all the kinds of love, but most important of all is to find your true ideal love. You might ask, why is she emphasizing when God says that we cannot uh, put any other one before him? Yes, God is the ultimate love, which is the agape love. but in I'll, I'll explain parental love is the love between a biological parent and adoptive parent in the bible there's a great emphasis put on bearing children because our lord said for us in genesis 9 verse chapter 9 verse 7 as for you be fruitful and increase in number multiply on earth and increase upon it he doesn't just mean bearing children it could be having a gift that you have to increase upon, uh, being courteous, many ways to be fruitful. So it's just not children, but to have children is the most, is what we all think about when we read about that. And agape love, which I was saying is the most ultimate, that would be the best because God came down and created with Mary and gave us Jesus Christ who showed us agape love by dying for our sins um, and it says in Joshua 24 5, chapter 24 verse 15 but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your fa fa forefathers served beyond the rivers or the gods of the Amorites in which land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Like I was saying in my previous video, uh, because of the Tower of Babel, God says that well, it says in the Bible that in the building of the Tower of Babel, we got confused. And in getting confused, we got different languages and different thoughts and different perspectives of who God is. So when we got that, we got different names for God. So when the British came, they were using Jesus Christ and we were using the writing uncle Paul. So they, for them to understand it, for us to understand it, they had to come to our level and explain it to us that yes, we are using Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ was being worked through the Spirit of God. God is a spirit, and He, Jesus Christ, was being used through the Spirit of God. That's why He came to earth to die for us. And that's it. So 
Agape love is all about that. But the true love to me is to find the counterpart of your soul, spirit, mind, heart, shadow, and body. Yes, shadows, you have to be separate shadow-wise because you cannot be joined shadow unless there's light reflecting and you're holding hands. That's how you can be joined by shadow-wise. And as children, we are made to believe in true love through Disney movies such as Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, etc. So our preconceived notions about love become distorted when we go in the real relationship part about love. The first thing that we will make the first thing that we will the first thing that will make two people attracted to each other will be attraction of the soul's counterpart to each other. There are two different types of souls attraction. Uh there's I um, know there's no two different types of soul attraction. I'm sorry I made a mistake. There are different types of of attraction. There's soul attraction the spiritual attraction. And you could love someone because you're attracted to their soul, but it will never materialize into a marriage unless God wants it to material into a marriage. And but but you could remain friends. This sort of friendship, this sort of soul attraction or friendship, love is what I, I will call finding your soul sister or soul brother. All these relationships, if nurtured properly, will last for a lifetime. The second attraction is the attraction of the spirit, where the individual you're attracted to. Uh, most people, the second attraction is an attraction to the spirit of the individual you're attracted to. The people, most people, forgive me, I am having a verbal dyslexia here. <laughs> most people confuse the spirit with the soul. The soul is the breath of the life breathed into you by God, while the spirit is your essence, which can be called anywhere and can sometimes wonder of if God calls it to be with somebody else. The mind is the most complex organ in the human body. We have yet to discover its full potential. Some of the greatest minds of our world have passed on. Some are present with us and others are yet to be born. If we are able to tap into the full potential of our brain power, we will discover that God, the greatest genius of all, has created us very well. The heart is the organ aside from the brain that you cannot live without. Once you are connected to the soul, connected to the soul, spirit, mind, body, heart, and sometimes shadow, the person will be connected to your heart. And like the heart, being used to pump blood to the whole body so it will symbolically connect everything that has been discussed and how you will know your true love after all this i know i'm rambling on but if you read the book it'll make sense reading is <laughs> a little bit confusing because i was having verbal diarrhea and verbal dyslexia so forgive me after all the soul Spirit, mind, and heart are connected and you see each other as connected and you want to be joined on a physical level in Christ, then you will go and see your pastor or deacon because when a child is born, he or she is perfect in his or her parents' eyes. This will make the parents give accolades to the child, i.e. you're beautiful, etc. When a child grows up and has to mingle with the outside world, or she becomes either a social butterfly or a sentry in a cocoon never to evolve into a butterfly until later on in life. The image from said per person's mind of his or her appearance is ingrained in his or her la life from childhood, childbirth. 
so they believe and are confident that no one is above them or lesser than them, but rather individually unique, but equal and equal to them. Once you are able to uh, to be attracted to a person's soul, spirit, mind, heart, body, and sometimes shadow, if God wills it to be, you will find that you and your significant other will trust each other and become one. Because trust, to me, is the acronym, the real, the letter U stays together. And you never have to change anything about yourself or the other person to love you. When he or she hurts, you will hurt. You will do anything to be by his or her side. So after you see your guru or your spiritual leader or your pastor or your deacon, he or she can marry you. And then you can you can come together in front of your family and friends. And they, uh, the guru, spiritual leader, deacon, or pastor can marry you in your in in a wedding ceremony, or you can have a, a just a prayer in church over your union, or have a prayer over done over your traditional marriage, whichever one that you see fit for your lifestyle. Um, well, I hope somebody found some sort of uh, advice from what it is that I, I've read. If you want to read it, you can purchase it. If you want to patronize me, patronate, oh, I am having verbal dyslexia again. If you want to help me, pet, do patronage to me and the gift that God has blessed me with, then please do go and purchase the the, the book on Amazon.ca or Amazon.com. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Bye and have a blessed day.